Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Ramos, and I'm going to be reading Lucita Comes Home to Oaxaca by Robin B. Cano. After a long and tiring journey from the north, Lucita and her grandmother arrived in Oaxaca. Lucita was born in Oaxaca and lived there before her parents went to the United States to look for work. All her cousins, aunts, and uncles of Oaxaca were impatiently waiting their arrival. Hello, Lucita, her cousins Ramon and Josefina both exclaimed at once. We are so happy you've come back to Oaxaca. Welcome, dear mother, Uncle Carlos said smiling as Aunt Teresa took Lucita in her arms. Our home is your home. But though Lucita greeted her family politely, she didn't leave her grandmother's side. Grandmother Maria felt happy to return to Oaxaca and be together again with her family. She didn't see the deep sadness that clouded Lucita's eyes. The little one missed her parents who had stayed behind working. She hardly played at all with her cousins. She remembered the beautiful stories grandmother had told her about Oaxaca, but she wanted to be with her mama and papa. Lucita, grandmother told her, we will stay two whole months in Oaxaca. You'll have time to play with your cousins and get to know some marvelous places. But to Lucita, two months seemed like an eternity and she didn't think about having fun. That night, she dreamed about a huge white bird. She looked up at the sky and with arms wide open, asked the bird to take her home. But the bird kept on flying. When daybreak came, Lucita's pillow was damp with her tears. The next day, Uncle Carlos was getting ready to go to Alejandro's rugs to sell in his craft shop. Papa, please take us with you, begged Josefina. Lucita would like to see the rugs that cousin Alejandro makes. They all climbed into the truck and off they went to Alejandro's house. When they arrived, the whole family was busy at their tasks. Alejandro was working on the loom. He was weaving beautiful silver fish into a blue background. The bobbins were flying from one side to the other. In a corner of the patio, cousin Elena stirred a big kettle of red dye on the fire. While Aunt Leticia crushed more dried cochineal on the grindstone, she explained how the Zapotecs have used its red dye for hundreds of years. But Lucita was still thinking about the silverfish swimming in Alejandro's loom. On Sunday, after leaving church, they went to the town where the black pottery is made. Aunt Margarita, who had just had a baby boy, lived there. Aunt Margarita had Benito wrapped in his soft blanket. She let Lucita hold the baby and showed her the pieces of black pottery that they made. Some pots were so large, Lucita could almost fit inside them. There were also some little animals, but she liked the little angels best. Aunt Margarita gave each girl a piece of clay and they all began to work. Lucita made a sweet little angel and said to herself, this is for my mama. I miss her, but I do like to work with this clay. Lucita was beginning to feel a little happier. She had no longer dampened the pillow at night with her tears. A few days later, she went to cousin Cecilia's birthday party. When the children broke the piñata, Uncle Esteban picked up his violin and played Las Mañanitas. Everyone sang along, even Lucita. She felt proud to know the words. She remembered when she used to sing Las Mañanitas with her parents in the north. My home is in the north, 
she thought, she thought to herself, but it's in Oaxaca too. Then she realized she no longer felt that terrible knot, which just a few days ago was squeezing her heart. While she was playing school with her cousins, Lucita asked, Ramona, do you remember the pink giraffe you sent me last Christmas? Someday, could we go see more of those little wooden animals? Of course, I'll ask Papa to take us to Uncle Jamie's house tomorrow so you can see how they are made. When they got there, Uncle Jamie was carving a beautiful little rabbit. After pouring a pot of hot water over some piglets, Aunt Soledad gave each child a piece of warm tortilla. Cousin Alicia held Lucita's hand and took her to see the wooden animals. These are ready to send to the Museum of Santa Fe. New Mexico, said Alicia. How beautiful, exclaimed Lucita. Look what a pretty little cat. Then Cousin Pablo shyly gave her the little purple cat covered with yellow flowers. The days flew by and Lucita became impatient. She thought there would, wouldn't be enough time to visit the animal market. She also wanted to go to the Benito Juarez market, the very big market where clothes, food, baskets, and all kinds of things were sold. And besides, Aunt Margarita had promised to take her to the plaza so she could hear the musicians play the marimba. One cool and sunny morning, the whole family got into Uncle Carlos' truck. Singing and laughing, they took the narrow road that leads to Monte Alban, the sacred mountain of the Zapotec people. Together, they climbed the steps of one of the monuments, clearing to the top. There, Lucita reached up as high as she could. Look, she said, I can almost touch the sky. When they sat down to rest, grandmother told them that for hundreds of years, Zapotec priests live on the holy mountain. There, they studied the stars, watched the changes of the moon, and found out the best time to plant corn. They sprayed the cosijo, the rain of God, to bring them rain so that the corn, squash, and flowers would grow in abundance. That night, Lucita came home so tired that she went to bed without supper. She dreamed again of the big white bird. She clung to its wings and they flew over Monte Alban singing Las Mañanitas. This time, Lucita's did, Lucita didn't ask the bird to take her to her home in the north. She felt happy in Oaxaca and proud to belong to the Zapotec people. Still half asleep, she felt someone hug her tenderly. Lucita, my dearest, we are here in Oaxaca. Mama, Papa, you are here, she cried. Lucita hugged her parents and snuggled happily between them. The end. hope you enjoyed the book. Thank you.